Day 17, trick shot. We're launching a probe. It has to be on a trajectory that causes it to be within a target area after some time. In this example, the target area is down here, and we're launching with a horizontal velocity of 7 and a vertical velocity of 2. So we go over to the right 7 and up 2. And then things happen to the velocities due to drag and gravity. So that means the next one doesn't go as far and high. Gravity starts to pull it down. And we continue to decrease the, the forward distance. Here's some other examples. For part one, we have to find the highest y position. With the data above and this initial velocity, we need to find that the highest y position reached was 45. And for part two, we have to find the number of different initial velocity values that allow us to hit the target. And with the test data, they're 112. Let's run and see what I get. Well, what did it do? It did kind of a brute force approach, trying different combinations of x and y values. And the best one, as expected, was 6, 9, that gives us a max height of 45. Let's see if we can find that one. 6, 9, the height from that is 45. And then um, there were 112 altogether. So that was, my, that was my data for my answers. How does the code work? Well, let's go down to the bottom. We call solve. Solve hard codes the data, creates target ranges using the built in range, and sets the best max height to zero, sets the best dx and dy to none, num wins to zero, and then brute force, lots of combinations of delta x, delta y, delta is a letter of the Greek alphabet that's often used for a change. So change in X and change in Y. And then we call max height to find the highest point we reach if we can hit the target from the starting delta X and delta Y. And max height will return none if such inputs won't hit the target. If it's not none, then we increment the number of wins. We print out a message with the starting delta x and delta y and the height we reached. And then if that height is better than the so far best max height, we reset the best max height. And then we remember the best dx and the best dy. So that when we're done with this brute force loop, we can show the best dx and dy, and the best max height, and the number of wins. Let's look at max height now. That's up at the top of the file. It takes the starting dx and dy, and the target ranges. And these are supplied as a tuple of two range objects. Max height returns an it or none if there's no hit of the target. Well, we copy the starting dx and dy into dx and dy. We set the initial position to 0, 0. Set max height to none. We create some functions we're going to use. And then our main loop here in max height is um, while we're not too far right and we're not too far down. That kind of describes these pictures here. 
We don't want to be too far right or too far down as we are here. Here, this one's too far right. This is too far right and too far down. What do we do if we can keep going? We add delta x to x, and then we change delta x based on the rules, which says if it's positive, subtract 1. If it's less than 0, add 1. Otherwise, leave it alone. And then for y, we add delta y to it. And then the rule about delta y is you just subtract 1 each time. Then, if we haven't yet set max height, or our y position now exceeds the max height, we set max height to y. Then, if the point is in the target, we return max height. Well, let's look at point and target. That's just up above here. Target ranges is the tuple of the two ranges the min and, min and max of x and the min and max of y. And so a point is in the target if the x-coordinate is in the x-range and the y-coordinate is in the y-range. Let me just run this again with the real data. And it finds the best one is 13,175 with this max height. And there are this many solutions. And those were my answers, uh, 15,400 and 58,44. Here's the 58,44 and the 15,400. All right, see you next time.